Welcome to Miss Lovedoll's video on the organization of living things. The objectives of this video are to help you summarize the hierarchical organization of multicellular organisms from cells to tissues to organs to organ systems all the way up to organisms. And you'll be able to list examples of each level of organization. So let's get started. We're going to work our way from the smallest to largest. So the smallest unit of structure and function in a living thing is a cell. And cells are specialized to carry out specific functions. For example, in the human body, we have blood cells, bone cells, nerve cells, and egg cells, just to name a few. Structure and function in biology have specific meanings. Structure means the overall form of something. You can think of it like the shape or like a piece of something. Function is the special, normal, or proper physiologic activity of something. You can think of it like the thing's job or what it does or what its purpose is. So for example, in a house, a house might be made of bricks. The structure is the brick, and bricks have a special shape that enables them to be useful in building a house. If bricks didn't have their rectangular shape, they would not be as useful and it, they wouldn't be able to do their job as well. And their job or their function is to provide shape and support to the walls of the house. Structure and function in biology are very closely related. The next level of organization is the tissue. A group of similar cells that work together to perform a function are called tissues. In the human body, we have many different kinds of tissue. We have connective tissue, which is the stuff that really holds our body together. Epithelial tissue is our skin cells. Nervous tissue, everything from our nerves to our brains and muscular tissue or muscle tissue. Those are all made of similar cells that work together to do something specific. The next level of organization is the organ. When two or more types of tissue work together to perform a specific function, we call them organs. And in this slide you can see a picture of the liver, the heart, the lungs, and the stomach just to name a few. An organ system is a group of organs that work together to perform a specific function. In the human body, we have over a dozen different organ systems, from the muscular system to the circulatory system. The last level of organization that we're going to talk about today is an organism. When several organ systems combine together, they form an organism. And an organism is an individual living thing that has all seven characteristics of life. So for example, all of these things here from bacterium to protists to fungi to plants to animals are all individual living things that react to stimuli, reproduce and grow, maintain homeostasis, to name a few. And that's it for the organization of living things. Make sure you have these vocabulary words in your notes and that you have a good understanding of what they mean. And don't forget the three R's. Review your notes and make sure they make sense. Write a reflection for every page of notes that you took. One of your reflections needs to be a nested graphic organizer of the organization of living things, similar to the one that was on the first slide of this video. And lastly, respond to this question. How does this video help you understand the characteristic of organized that all living things have? Remember, spelling, punctuation, and grammar count. And now you know about the organization of living things. And thanks to these people for the pictures used in this video. Thanks for watching.